appreciate it. Uh, my next guest was at the concert, so more witness now. And, and I said this was going to happen. People are talking now. They're congregating there. He witnessed the horror unfolding uh, as the gunfire was raining out. Brian Claypool, defense attorney, joins me now by phone. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining us today. No problem there. You know, you know I would say uh, witnesses are sometimes impounded by the emotion. And I know as a defense attorney, we probably have a good chance now to hear a little bit more forensic look at what was going on. And I want to get that from you, from your vantage point, what you saw. Yeah, so I, I was sitting uh, in the, it's called the VIP section. It was, it was, it was uh, uh, deemed the neon lounge. And so if Jason Aldean is looking out into the crowd, it would be to his left. And if I'm looking at him, it's to my right, and it's close to the stage, and it goes back a bit. And I was sitting in that area, and it was about his fourth song, and I heard a, a you know a couple cracks, and they felt very close to me. And by the way, we where I was sitting was in the corner. It was closest to Las Vegas Boulevard and the Mandalay Bay. It was in this little corner area. So those little those first cracks sounded, you know. Uh, like it was a fireworks or firecracker, but I looked up and I didn't see anything. And then what was scary was Jason Aldean hesitated during the song. He he, he missed a few beats because he was worried. And then what really got me, I mean, the moment that really seared my my mind, it'll be in my mind forever, is I then heard some more noises and I looked at Jason Aldean and he literally dropped his guitar and and sprinted off the stage. At that moment, I jumped up and started running to the side to, to run the stairs to get out of the VIP section. And then that's when the onslaught of just, just I, I can't even, I, it, it must have, it, it felt like at least 30 seconds. It just would not stop. And I'm laying face down on this aluminum stairwell and I'm pulling people down because they're still sitting there because they're not, they're kind of frozen in time and mm. they're not reacting. And, and it felt like forever. And, and, and I will tell you, I didn't feel, I felt like I was lower but my head wasn't protected. And as every bullet, as every sound, you know, another bullet sound came out, I'm like, okay, is that one gonna hit? Is that gonna wow. hit me? I mean, it, it was just terrifying. Well, the way that you describe how you crouched down, and, and I wondered about this, you were reaching up, pulling people down, because people do that in that moment, don't they, Brian? They freeze, they, they, you don't I'm, know I, which way to go. I, I, let me tell you how bad it was. And I'm not blaming anybody. By the way, Kansas Country Western Festival, they're the on the planet. They're there to celebrate life. Their souls are so clean. They just want to have fun. And moments before the shooting, it was surreal, Eric. I, I actually saw two Las Vegas police officers right in the general section, about 25 feet in front of me. They were chit-chatting with a couple women and a couple guys. And I said to myself, I said, man, what a gig, what a great gig they had for the last three days. The best people on the planet at these concerts, great musical act, nobody getting in trouble. I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. And then can you imagine what they went through also then about 15 or 20 minutes later? I mean, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. And then to get back to your question, I was running through the front row and there were four people still sitting and I'm running for my life. So, and then, then real quick, I mean, after it stopped, he must've been reloading. And by the way, we didn't know where the shooter was. So we thought they were, he was, some shooters were going to jump over the five-foot fence and come inside and kill us. But then I ran down these stairs real quick, and then there was a heroic guy near a door that, that, that channeled about 15 of us wow. into this little room under the bleachers, like a production room. And it, that, that's the second thing that I'll never, I will never forget. There were six, about five or six young women in that, in that little room, kneeling, crying in a corner. And I want to tell you, that was heartbreaking. I mean, I will never forget those women oh, crying yeah. there because because I at that point I went from man I'm going to die like the Orlando shooting in this room. That's what I first thought. It was like pick your poison. It's like what 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 do we do? I run straight or do Brian, I run into the room? We're going to hold one? you over for the commercial break. We're right back. Adore.